household salvation. Do you receive that, man of God? And like a proud dad, I just want you to know this morning, I'm proud of you, son. I'm proud of you. Because I see you stepping out in ways I've never seen you step out before. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Somebody bless the Lord in this place right now. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Neville and Shanta this morning at the very beginning of praise and worship. I could just feel some things that you guys were feeling in your hearts. And I heard the Lord say, hang in there and don't give up. The Lord says, I'm going to get you through things that you're going through right now. And the Lord says, don't forget, I've got a mighty call on your life. I have a mighty call on your life and I haven't forgotten, the Lord says. The Lord says, y'all are going through some things right now. Just continue to hold on to him tightly like you're doing. And the Lord said, this season isn't going to last forever. God says, I'm going to bring you through the other side. And my yeah. glory's on the other side. Yeah. My glory's on the other side. Yeah. Sorrow yeah. may come in the night, but joy comes Ooh. in the morning. Hallelujah. And I love you guys. The Lord loves you even more importantly. And we're so glad you're in the house this morning. Yeah. We missed you. But some things, y'all, I'm just sensing y'all are going through right now. God says they're not going to last forever. God says, I'm going to bring you victoriously through on the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Bless me the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you got the word with you this morning, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Oh, hallelujah. Chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 this morning. Woo, hallelujah. I'm not sure how far we're going to get this morning because I'm going to tell you this. I heard the Lord say, take communion first and my glory will come. And the realms will open up in this room. You know, I believe realms of God have already opened up in this room this morning. Yeah. Last Sunday, as the word was being released, I felt a realm open up in this room. I felt something in this room I've never felt before that was from the Lord. This week, as we pressed in in 72 hours of prayer, realms continued to open up in this house. And I believe even this morning, realms were opening in this place. Amen. And I want you to keep in mind this morning, if realms of God open up, it's not just for us. Because when realms of God open up over this house, it opens up for the entire region. How many hear that in the Lord? Amen. It's not just a realm for this house. Realms are opening up for this entire region as we're pressing into the Lord. How many receive that right now? So Lord Jesus, in your name, we ask God that this word will open up realms. Lord, we ask that this word will bring within us a stirring and a hunger and a thirst for you, God. Lord, I ask that you, Lord God, as this word is being released, will rend the heavens and come down. And Lord, may you open up the eyes of our heart and our yeah. understanding as yeah. this word is released right now. Lord, I thank you for the Apostle Paul. Lord, hallelujah, who said, may the Lord give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you might know him more. And Lord Jesus, right now, we invite the spirit of wisdom and revelation in this room because we want to know you more, Lord. You're our pearl of great price. You're the treasure buried in the field. It's you, Lord Jesus, in you alone. And Lord, we desire you more than anything else right now in this place, Lord. Lord, as you have poured out your presence so powerfully this morning, Lord, as we leave this place later today, may we leave in a place of worship. May we leave in the river, Lord. Lord, may we leave in that place, Lord, where we know the reality of what your word says, where your word says, and I will be your God and you will be my people and I will dwell amongst you, Lord. Lord, we're no longer satisfied with a visitation. We want your habitation. Lord, we're no longer satisfied with a touch. We want to fully embrace you. 
Lord, we're not satisfied with what Christianity and the churches in our generation. We want more of you, Lord. Yeah. And Lord, I ask as this word is released, may realms be open, may and may hunger be released. And Lord God, may you begin to do something we've never seen you do before in this place and in us. In Jesus' name we pray. For Lord, you're the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by you. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Again, I want to thank everybody that participated in the 72-hour prayer vigil that we had. God was so blessed. Was he not? God was so blessed. And realms opened up for us. Last night, as we were pressing in and spending time with the Lord, God brought a woman into the house that used to be a part of the house with her husband, and she had lost him the night before, and the Lord allowed us to minister to her and pray for her. How many know realms open that night? But Friday night, when I came in the house, I came in after work, and I wanted to spend time with the Lord and be a part of what God is doing in this place. And the Lord told me, he said, Bring your notebook with you. And so I brought my notebook with me and my pen with me. I thought I was just going to spend some time with the Lord. But as I sat down over there, God began to speak. And God spoke something to me that really blessed my heart. And the Lord has released me just to release part of this word to you this morning. I believe part of the word is going to be released at a date later time. But part of the word can be released this morning. And this morning we're talking about the realms of the Lord. You can call them glory realms. You can call them the realms of the third heaven. But we're going to talk about the realms of our God today. How many are willing to receive? As I sat down over there Friday night about 7 o'clock, this is what I heard the Lord say. Actually, it was about 5 o'clock. I heard the Lord say, I have come to bring my presence, my healing, my breaker anointing. The Lord says, I've come for a purpose. I always come for a purpose. I always come for a reason, my reason. Many dimensions at one moment in time. Do you believe this? The word was about two pages and the Lord kept asking me periodically, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? I believe in the Lord we're coming into a very crucial time where belief, a radical belief and faith are crucial for what God's about to do. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. And the Lord said, we're going to begin to believe the things that we've spoken and we've read and we've heard him say. So the Lord says, I've come to bring my presence, my healing, my breaker anointing. I've come for a purpose. I always come for a reason, my reasons, many dimensions at one moment in time. Do you believe this? The Lord says, when I enter the room, the realms of impossibility begin to open up to you. All of you. And as I heard this word, I heard this word being released this morning from this pulpit. And I very much heard the Lord emphasize the words for all of you. The Lord says the opening up of the realms of heaven is not just for a few select people. It's for all of us. How many received that? The Lord said all of you. The realms of heaven, my glory manifesting. All things become new in my glorious presence. Nothing on earth can remain the same in my presence. When I walk through heaven, everything is drawn to me. It turns towards me. It breathes in deeply. So it shall be on earth also in this place. Did I not say to you, pray on earth as it is in heaven? Heaven can and does come down and manifest in the earth. Be still and know that I will manifest. Be still and know that I am he who was and who is. And then I heard the Lord emphasize this and is to come. For the time is coming and has now come. My Kairos time for Joel chapter 2 to be poured out. 
my spirit, my latter and former reign, my glory dwelling amongst men. And the Lord said, 2 Corinthians 6.16, He said, I will dwell with them, and I will walk with them, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. I'm not the God of what might be. I'm the God of what shall be. And let it be unto you according to my word. And my word will not return to me void. It shall be accomplished. Shall be, not might be. Do you believe this? And let me read this part again. The Lord said, when I enter the room, and I saw the Lord entering the room like he did this morning. When I walked in, the, in this place this morning, John Melt met me. The place already smelled like anointing oil. And John met me as I came around the foyer. And John said his presence just fell on the room. And how many know Jesus walked in the room? Amen. And the Lord wants to teach us how to sense the realms of his glory and his presence. How to sense when he walks into the room, not only that he walked into the room, but to sense the reason why he walked into the room. Because God always shows up with a purpose and with an agenda. And whenever the Lord walks in the room, whether it's your quiet time, whether we're in the church corporately together, whether you're in your vehicle and he comes and he sits down next to you, there's always a purpose and a reason in it. Many times there's a multidimensional purpose and reason. And the Lord says, I want to teach you not only how to sense when I walk into the room, but to sense what I want to do when I walk into the room. Because did I not say I only do what I see the Father doing? The Lord says, I will teach you how to sense my presence, to sense my purpose, and partner with me when I enter into the room. For you will do greater things than what I did. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. He said, when I enter the room, the realms of impossibility begin to open up to you. Is anybody hearing that? When I enter in the room, the realms of impossibility begin to open up to you, all of you, the realms of heaven, my glory manifesting, all things becoming new in my glorious presence. Nothing on earth can remain the same in my presence. When I walk through heaven, everything is drawn to me. It turns to me. It breathes in deeply. So it shall be on earth also. In this place. Is anybody blessed by that word? Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm so pleased that God just allowed me to share that. Because it sets up what God's going to talk to us about here this morning. So if you've got the word with you, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 4. And I want to say something as we begin to get into the word this morning. The Lord's already released part of this word. But as we get into the word this morning, the Lord was saying this yesterday. One step of obedience is all that I'm looking for from you. One step of obedience is all I'm looking for from you. And you heard me just speak an encouraging word to JT a moment ago that God is so pleased with the steps that he's taking. The Lord is saying right now, one step of obedience, one step is all I'm looking for from you. But we need to understand when the Lord says that, one step of obedience will lead to another, to another, to another. Because this is the year in the Hebrew calendar, 5783, and it's a picture of a man's foot moving forward as he's carrying wealth, the blessing of the Lord. The Lord says your obedience will move you forward in 5783, and the obedience that you give me this year, you will eat of the fruit of that seed that you plant this year in the year that is to come. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. So guys, let me say this. The next two years in the realm of the Spirit are very important. The most important years you've ever walked the earth. These are years that are crucial for you to be obedient to the Lord, 
to step forward in the Lord, to let go of the things that have held you back, to begin to see yourself the way God sees you, and to begin to take Him at His word. These two years are crucial because they're setting up mighty things. And do not think it strange that they're setting up the return of the Lord. Because I believe the return of the Lord is very near. How many receive that in Him? All right. Let's stand this morning to honor the first reading of the Word. How many know the Lord Jesus is the Word made flesh? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. Lord, pour out your presence over this group. Pour out your presence over this group, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And the Word of God says this, and this is Paul speaking. He says, I must go on boasting, although there's nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. Visions and revelations from who, church? From the Lord. So what is the Word telling us? Visions and revelations are from the Lord. And therefore today... How many receive that in the Lord? And they're not for the super spiritual. They're not just for Benny Hen. They're not just for, hallelujah, Perry Stone. How many know dreams and visions are for you? Because God is opening up the realms of the prophetic and the seer anointing in your life. How many receive that in Him? So He says, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Church, where was he caught up into? He was in the third heaven. Now the third heaven is many times where we picture the throne room of God to be. It's in the third heaven. Now we've got to understand when Paul was caught up into the third heaven, he was caught up into the realms of God. When John was on the Isle of Patmos in the, on the Sabbath, in the Spirit, and he heard the Lord call him up, he was called up into the third heaven. How many are hearing this in the Lord? There are times when God calls us up into the third heaven. Grab a hold of this. There are times when the third heaven comes to us. How many are hearing this in the Lord? God is teaching us right now to be a place where he can walk in the room and be received for who he is. Why did Jesus love to go to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house? Because they loved him and they received him for who he was. Yeah. Mary sat at his feet and just listened. Mar Martha loved to feed him. Lazarus loved to hear his words. And he would not spend the night in Jerusalem. He would walk to Bethany and spend the evening with them. How many want this place to be like Bethany? Where Jesus loves to come. Amen? So he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. How was he caught up into the third heaven? He was in Christ. How many received that? It's your birthright. You have dual citizenship. You have citizenship in the third heaven, and you have citizenship here on earth. How many received that? God is trying to awaken a generation of that. He said whether it was in the body or out of the body, he said, I don't know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I mean, he has no clue exactly how this happened. Was it in the body? Was it outside the body? Was it apart from the body? Where is it? Whoa. See, when you're caught up into the third heaven, you're caught up into the counsel of God. We talked about that last week, didn't we? We're caught up in the council, the meeting room, the throne room of God, where God is decreeing and declaring, and the elders are bowing and casting their crowns, and the angels are saying, holy, 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 where the seraphim are on fire for the Lord. And the saints that have gone on before us are worshiping from the crystal sea. Paul said, I heard inexpressible things. Can I give you a liberal interpretation of that? I heard things that human language cannot even speak. How many received that? And he said, I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except in my weakness. Please be seated this morning. Except in my weakness. Let me say this again, guys. God is looking for one step of obedience from you right now. That's all that he's looking for. And if you'll give him one step of obedience, he'll lead you in the next and the next and the next. And before long, God is going to begin taking you into the realms of heaven. 
We're going to talk this morning about walking in the realms of God. And God's going to give us just a few things that, that we can, can look at, can meditate on to understand how this begins to happen. But if we're going to walk in the realms of God, we have to have this understanding, church. There are realms of the Holy Spirit that, that, the, mm, that God wants to draw the remnant church into. Let me say that again. There are realms of God that he wants to draw his remnant church into. How many received this in the Lord? Last Sunday, there were realms of God in this place. And we've got to understand this morning, there are realms of God opening up in this place. When we begin to walk in the realm of the supernatural, we begin to see the glory of God manifest yes. all around us. Yes. See, when you begin to walk in the realms of God, it's not just for you. Because when you begin to walk in the realms of God, the glory of God begins to manifest on you and through you. Just ask Moses. How many know when Moses went up the mountain, the glory came down? How many received that? When he went up the mountain, the glory came down. And when he came down off the mountain, the glory came with him to the point where his face manifested the glory light so strongly. What did they say to Moses? We need you to veil your face. We, we just can't take this. We can't take this. What does this tell you? When you begin walking in the realms of glory, you begin to behold his glory and his glory begins to manifest yeah. through you. Yeah. And I believe when we study about people like Wigglesworth and Catherine Coleman, when we begin to study William H. Branham and other heroes of the faith within the last 100, 200 years, Pastor Seymour at Azusa Street, we're studying about people who through pursuing intimacy with Jesus learned how to begin to walk in the realms of God. Amen. How many received this in the Lord? Amen. But you've got to understand something. If you have a heart, if you have a desire to begin to walk in the realms of God, you're never going to be the same. Amen. You're never going to be the same. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? I want you to notice something in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 4. He said he was caught up in the paradise and he heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. How many know in that first encounter with the realms of God that Paul had in the third heaven, he was never the same after that? Grab a hold of this church. It ruined him. It ruined him. And from that point forward, I just believe in my spirit that Paul struggled. What do you mean, Pastor? How did he struggle? He struggled in that place where part of him so longed to go into the glory realms of God and never return to the earth. While another part of him knew that there was a powerful call on his life that needed to be fulfilled in this realm. Amen. How many are hearing this in the Lord? He had that struggle. He had that battle and he talks about it in the Lord. See, it ruined him. When you begin to walk in the glory realms, it ruins you. When you begin to walk in the deeper realms of the things of God, it ruins you and God brings you to a place where you can never go back. Because the book of Hebrews talks about those who have tasted the power of the age to come. What does the word say can happen? See, God wants to bring us to a place of no return where we dwell in the glory realms of God. What happens when we begin to dwell in the glory realms of God? We have one foot in heaven and we have one foot on the earth. When that begins to happen. And Coleman and Wigglesworth and Branham and, and Brands, oh, I can just go on and on and on and on. But these heroes of the faith, I believe they learned how to walk in a place with one foot in heaven and the other on the earth. They walked in a place of being continually ruined in the Lord where nothing else mattered but Jesus. They went to that place and they were ruined forever. And I believe every day they were torn between just wanting to be in the courts of God and never having to leave and wanting to fulfill the Lord's purpose here on earth. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. How many want to be forever ruined in Him? Okay. So we're talking today about the realms of God. 
That leads to the question, what is a realm? A realm is a royal jurisdiction or extent of a government, a dominion. Isn't that interesting? Let me read it again. A realm is a royal jurisdiction or extent of a government, a dominion. So what happens when we enter into the realms of God? Even though we're here on earth, when we enter into the realms of God, we're entering, we're entering into His royal jurisdiction. We're entering into the place of His domain and dominion. How many receive that? Amen. But this is what we have to realize. We're not just to go up and experience and encounter what's going on in the realms of God in the third heaven. The Lord wants us to take the atmosphere of activity, the declarations from the throne of God that are going on in the third heaven and bring them back with us yeah. and release them in the earth. That's why after Paul had this encounter with God, signs, wonders, and miracles started following him. How many received this? Signs, wonders, and miracles began to manifest in him. Why? Because he went to the place where the glory dwells. And he brought the glory back with him. And how many know Jesus never hid this? When they asked Jesus how to pray, what did he say? Pray, Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, can I liberally interpret that? Pray, Father, may the realms of heaven manifest in the earth. May the dominion of heaven manifest in the earth. May the glory of heaven manifest in the earth. And I think one of the greatest challenges of the church right now is that we're looking up at heaven and we're longing so desperately to have access to heaven when access to heaven is already ours. And we don't realize we're really not down on the earth looking up. We're seated with him in heavenly realms right now looking down. How many received that in the Lord? So we've got to understand that. We're seated with Christ in heavenly realms. We're already there. God is just coming in, bringing you into the reality of where your true residence really is. Amen. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. See, I believe the next time you have your quiet time, the Lord doesn't want for you to get a tickling of his presence. God wants to open up the ceiling of that room and for you to see the glory of God come forth. I believe every time we come together for a service, God is saying, stop doing Sunday morning service. I believe the Lord is saying what I want you to do every time you come is come to minister to me, believing, expecting that I will open up the realms of the third heaven to you every single time. And we will begin to be a people as that happens that walk in the realm of his glory. But if we're going to walk in the realm of his glory, we need to learn how to stay on the pathway. And the Lord said, if you're going to visit the third heaven, if you're going to walk in the realms of my glory, if you're going to be a people that shift the atmosphere and bring down the glory, the Lord says, you can't walk in mixture. Because the Lord said, to a people without mixture, I'll pour out my power beyond measure. How many received that in the Lord? So what is a realm? It's a royal jurisdiction or extent of a government. It's a dominion. How many know when Adam sinned, the enemy took the keys away from him? The keys represented the power, the authority, the dominion that God had given Adam. But how many know what the first Adam failed to do, the second Adam did? Jesus came, the spotless lamb, died, rose again, hallelujah, and took the keys from the enemy. What does Jesus now want to do? Give the keys back to his bride. His Adams here on earth. How many receive that? Hallelujah. See, we've got to understand what it is that God was doing. What was God's heart from creation? Man and woman in the garden with him, an unhindered, intimate relationship. Adam sins. Now, sin comes into the world. The enemy gets the keys. But Jesus, the second Adam, comes because he wants to set right what the first Adam couldn't do. And so what's God's heart now? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, is he not? 
He wants man and woman together in a garden with him in intimacy. Is anybody seeing this? He's calling us from the garden to the garden. How many receive that? That's what he's doing. We've got to understand this. And the Lord says, as you press into that garden of intimacy with me, the Lord says, I'm going to begin to open up the realms of the third heaven because I believe the greatest glory realms of God are about to open up over the end times church. Amen. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. Okay. So I'm going to make a statement here that might be controversial, but I want you to grab a hold of this in the Lord. Controversy doesn't scare me anyway. So if you know me, you know that. I believe the church in our generation is operated in the lower realms of God. But there's higher realms that he's calling us to. I believe we've settled for the lower realms. How many receive that? Okay, what's settling for the lower realm? You know, we've got somebody in the church in a wheelchair. Man, I hope God heals them. The higher realms of glory is we walk with the healer. And there's no one that the Lord doesn't want to heal. God is going to heal this person. And we're going to see it happen in the name of Jesus. And we go forth now in the name of Jesus and we see it happen. Um, how many receive that? Amen. See, we've got used to the lower realms of glory. We've got used to three songs and offering, two songs, a little bit of an encouraging word, and you go home unchanged. Amen. We've been used to if he heals, if he delivers, if he cleanses, if he changes, if he sets the, the alcoholic free, if he delivers the drug addict, if, if, if. God is calling this generation to the realms of His glory where we stop saying if and we know in radical faith our God is the God of the impossible. Yeah. But it's going to happen as an intimate generation presses in and wants to know Him. They're going to realize what the Word means when the Word says to us and it brings glory to Jesus when the Holy Spirit gives us what the Father gave Him. How many received that in the Lord? God is calling us into the glory realms. How many received that in the Lord? But I'm going to make a statement here, and I've made it two or three times already, and I'm going to make it again. The key to beginning to walk in the realms of the glory of God is intimacy with Jesus. If you desire, if you desire the glory realms but not the glorious one, you're not going to see the realms of glory. But if you want to look into the face of the one that you love and gaze upon his beauty, the glory realms will follow. Come on now. That's why today when we came into the church and we started praising, we started praying first and then praising and worshiping, God just kind of put in our hearts what he wanted to do today. If we had felt the presence of God come and then our hearts would have been, yes, glory realms, let's go. We got our eyes off the glorious one. Because when the manifestation becomes the focus, we lose the, the glorious one. How many understand this? So when I'm preaching here and teaching on the glory realms and first comes the knowledge, then comes the test, this teaching is going to open up the door for you to begin to walk in the glory realms. Don't focus on the glory realms. Focus on the glorious one. Don't focus on the miracles. Focus on the miracle worker. And that's Jesus. How many receive this? Keep your focus in the right place. What you focus on determines what you miss. And the enemy would love it for glory realms to start opening up. And now we're worshiping the glory realm. And all of a sudden the glory realms close, which is the exact thing the enemy wanted from the start. See, when glory realms begin to open up, the enemy understands that he's in trouble and his kingdom is in jeopardy because it's a portal that's opened up to the realm of the third heaven that everything that's going on in the third heaven can now be pulled into the earth. How many receive that? How does it happen? Pressing in intimately to Jesus. How does it happen? As we stand on the bridge of faith and pull it in. How many receive that? There is such a spiritual hunger right now in the earth. And it's being filled with all kinds of things. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you right now. The interest in witchcraft, sorcery, the occult, in Islam, in all kinds of, the new age is exploding. Why? Because they're walking in a form of power. 
But it's not the power of our God. It's not the power of the realms of the third heaven. Amen. And the Lord says, when my people truly fall in love with me and pursue intimacy with me, and the glory realms of heaven begin to open up to them, they're going to take that glory here to earth, and the earth will see who the true and living God is through his people. Woo! How many receive that in the Lord right now? Lord, release your glory realms. Release your glory realms, I pray, into this room. What was God speaking to us weeks ago? In, in intercessory prayer, what's we've been speaking ever since? I want you to come higher. Yes. I want you to come higher. What's higher? The realms of God. What's higher? The realms of God. How many receive that? He said, I'm calling you up higher. Why? Because what we need for the days that are coming is not found in the lower realms of glory. It's only found through intimacy with Jesus and going up to the higher levels of glory. Grab a hold of this. How many know when you're climbing a mountain, the higher you go on the mountain, the further you can see? Amen. Okay, those of us that were up on the mountain in Colorado with me understand that. Amen. The higher you go in the mountain, up, up the mountain, the further you can see. God says the higher you go, the more you're going to understand what's going on in the valley below. The Lord says, the higher you go, the more you're going to understand what's going on in the earth below. And the Lord says, at each level of my glory as you're climbing the mountain, and each level of my glory as you're ascending into the third heaven, God says, there's things on that level of glory that you need. And that I want to release on the earth through you. Oh, come on. Amen. See, we've got to stop believing that, that we're just a flesh and blood people that have a supernatural God. We're a supernatural people that serve a supernatural God. Amen. The supernatural is ours, and the Lord said He's going to bring us to a place in Him at the end of the age where the supernatural becomes natural to us. Amen. Is anybody catching that? Where the supernatural becomes natural to us. Is anybody receiving this in the Lord? Amen. Okay? So we've got to see this. So the key... If we're going to walk in the realms of the supernatural, and Paul already said it's possible, he said, I'm going to go on to dreams and visions and encounters in the third heaven. By the way, I've got, I've got some news for you today. For Paul, that was a normal part of his existence after he was saved. Remember I mentioned God wants to make the supernatural something natural to you? Dreams, visions, revelation, angelic encounters being caught in the third heaven was normal for the Apostle Paul. Amen. It was normal for John the Beloved. Do I need to keep on going? The supernatural was normal to the heroes in the faith and the word. Why do, believe, why do we believe in this age then that we have to settle for the lower realms of glory? Who taught us this? Where do we get this message from? The Lord says, I want to call you higher. And by going deeper in intimacy with me, you're going to go higher and you're going to climb that mountain and you're going to walk in my glory like Moses did. How many received that? And how many know Moses walked in the glory in the old covenant? How much more today are we called to walk in the realms of God? How many received that in the Lord? Amen. Let me ask you again. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. We want that. We've got to pursue Jesus intimately, and we've got to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. You catching this? And through that process, take steps of obedience that God is calling us to take. I'm not going to sit here and say, okay, I've got a formula for this to happen. You do this, 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 and this. You pray this prayer. You read this passage. You do this. You jump up and down ten times. You do this. You do that. And you're going to get third heaven encounters. No, it comes through pressing in to Jesus. It comes through yielding the hold to the Holy Spirit. And it comes from acts of obedience that open up the realms of heaven before you. How many received that? And guys, I'm telling you. There's a place in the Lord where we fall so in love with Jesus, yield to the Holy Spirit so much, and walk in such a radical obedience to Him that we can be on the prayer carpet on a Sunday morning and a song comes on and we just lift our hands up and we're in the third heaven. And then the third heaven is being released through us into the room. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. How many know that this is the heart of God for us right now? 
How do I see and walk in the realms of the glory of the Lord? We've got to stop listening to what our finite mind is telling us. And we've got to start laying a hold of the Holy Spirit and listen to what He's speaking to us. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. Because when I start preaching the realms of glory, all of a sudden your mind starts going, you know, that's for the superstars and that's just for a few people and there's very few people that encounter that and how many people in Paul's days really got to it and look at how I sinned and what's happened in my life. Look how busy I am. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the other thing. That's just the enemy trying to keep you on the realms of glory. And that's your own flesh battling the things of the Spirit. How many know the Word of God says, Woo, if we walk in the flesh, we're going to fulfill the desires of the flesh. But if we walk in the Spirit, we're going to fulfill the desires of the Spirit. And guys, God is calling His end times church out of the flesh and into the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Some, some heard me, I think. God is calling the end times church out of the realm of the flesh and into the realm of the Spirit. Yeah. He's calling us to walk in a higher level of dimension in Him. It comes through pressing it intimately to Jesus. Come on. Yielding to the Holy Spirit and walking in steps of obedience to the Lord. How many receive that? It's not going to come out of a casual quiet time in a life where we listen to Jesus when we feel like it. It's going to come out of a life of radical obedience to the Lord. How many receive that in the Lord? If you receive that, let's go to Acts chapter 10. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. And we've got to understand something. If we start studying the New Testament church, we're going to see the New Testament church is the template of some things that God wants to do in the end times remnant church. Anything you see going on in the book of Acts is for the church today, but in greater measure. In fact, if we understand Joel chapter 2, the Lord says, I'm going to send you the latter and the former rain as I did once more. You know, it's interesting in Israel, when they went into apostasy, started worshiping idols and turned away from God, the rain stopped. And if the rain stopped, then they didn't have crops. It affected their entire economic system. They would starve and die, as John was just saying in the front row. See, the rain was crucial. There was a grab a hold of this. There was a connection between worshiping the true and living God and honoring Him and doing it His way and the rain falling. Yeah. And it's the same thing in your life today. When we truly worship and praise and honor and obedience to the living God and yield to His Spirit, the rain comes. The rain comes. I'm telling you, he releases the R-A-I-N because you're allowing him to R-E-I-G-N in your life. Is anybody getting this? It's the rain and the rain. And there's a lot of Christians walking around in the church today dry. It is because they're not allowing the Lord to reign in their life. But let me tell you this, guys. The latter rain was the Acts chapter 2 church. I'm sorry, the former reign. The former reign was the Acts chapter 2 church. The latter reign is what God is about to bring on the end times remnant church. And what did the Lord say in Haggai 2? The latter glory will be so much greater than the former glory. Yeah. So what you see God doing in the church in the book of Acts, that's just the beginning. I'm going to say this in love. That's the lower levels of glory. The end times remnant church is going to go to a higher level than what we see in the book of Acts. Amen. Come on. Amen. How many receive that in the Lord? Yeah. We've got to understand it. We've got a God that's not an ogre that wants to hold back his glory from you and lock you out of the third heaven until you die. You don't have to wait till the roll is called up yonder. The heavens are waiting for you to press in. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, does anybody receive this in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Does anybody receive this in the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I want you to notice what happens here in Acts chapter 10 to a guy by the name of Cornelius. Now Cornelius is a Gentile, but he's pressing in to the Lord. How many are willing to receive what God wants to speak to you today? The word says this, at Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius. He was a centurion. A centurion 
Mm. Commanded a thousand, no, a hundred men. A centurion was over a hundred men. Anybody remember when the centurion comes to Jesus? Seeking healing. And he says, Lord, you don't even need to come under my roof. I too am a man under authority. See, when we come under God's authority and begin to do it his way, things begin to happen. How many receive this in the Lord? So the Lord says at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian regiment. Now look at what was going on in his life. He and all his family were devoted, were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and he prayed to God regularly. Okay, church, what was that? That was positioning that he was doing. He was positioning himself to walk in the glory realms. He was positioning himself in intimate relationship with the Lord. Well, Pastor, why do you say he was in intimate relationship with the Lord? Look at the fruit of his life. He and his family were devout and God-fearing people, number one. They sowed, they gave generously to those in need, and they prayed regularly. That was an outgrowth of their intimate pursuit of Jesus. How many received that? And now notice what the word says in verse 3. And one day about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he had a vision. See, how many know in the New Testament church, dreams and visions were a normal part of life when you're pursuing intimacy with God? And our God is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. If it's in the Word, it's for you. How many receive that in the Lord? Now in his vision, the Word says he distinctly, he clearly, he undoubtedly, right? There's no room for interpretation. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. Notice what he says. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Notice the, the angel starts talking about his prayers and his gifts to the poor. They've done what? They've come before God. How did they come before God? They came before the throne of God in the realms of the third heaven. They caught his attention. How many are receiving this? There are times in praise and worship where we're enjoying the Lord, we're ministering to Him, we're singing anointed songs, but then a song comes on that was sung in the throne room of heaven before it was ever given to someone here on earth. And we begin to sing it, and all of a sudden, God's attention is on the room. Amen. That happened the other day. I stand, I stand in all of you. You know, I've been singing that song every day in the days of awe. It gets God's attention. See, when you love the Lord so much that you pay attention to what's going on in his calendar and you honor it and you step out in obedience, you get God's attention. JT, when you step out in obedience to the Lord, you get God's attention. How many are receiving this? Amen. How many want to get God's attention? Amen. Pursue Him intimately and step out in obedience to the Lord. Amen. Yield to His Holy Spirit. Trust Him. You are one step of obedience away from a radical shift of God in your life. Woo. Telling you that's a word from the Lord. Yes. Or just keep doing things the way you've been doing them. If you always get what you always got, right? Yeah. We always do what we've always done. We're always going to get what we already got. God said, I'm shifting your life and I'm doing a new thing. Yeah. Let go of the old things because the things that worked in previous years are not going to work in 5783. Because he's doing a new thing. Stop trying to approach him the same way you used to. Yield to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit how Jesus wants you to approach him every time. Every service we're together, we need to ask the Lord. Lord, how do you want us to approach you? Yeah. Lord, how do you want to be ministered to? What did God say to Moses to, to give a message to Aaron to at one point in the wilderness? He said, Moses, go tell your brother Aaron not to come before me any way he wants to. 
It's in the Word. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we come on Thursday night, Lord, how do you want to be approached tonight? How do you want to be ministered to? What do you want intercession to look like? Lord, it's Sunday morning. What do you want service to look like today? Holy Spirit said to me today, I want you to do communion before you do the Word. Yes, Lord. He said, if you do it, I'm going to release an anointing for the realms of heaven. Come on now. Well, where's the anointing for the realms of heaven? Well, we already got it. The anointing for the realms of heaven is in this room right now. Well, I don't feel it. Stop going by what you feel. Start going by what you know because of who you know. The realms of heaven are open in this room right now. Do not listen to your carnal mind. But let's realize the Lord is in this room right now. Therefore, all things are possible. And let's start treating him like that. Yeah. Come on. God's calling you to a higher level. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts, declares the Lord. As high as the heavens are from the earth are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Therefore, John, come up here. Amen. See, John the Beloved, we got to understand this church. John the Beloved at the Last Supper has his head on Jesus' chest. Because he's pursuing intimacy with Jesus down the road in his life, the Lord says, come up here. Mm -hmm. Intimacy takes us lower so we can go higher. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand this in your walk with the Lord. Everything is changing. Yes. Everything is changing. Yes. Holding on to what was is the enemy of what God's about to do in your life. Yeah. Throw out the mile markers of your old encounters with God in the ways God used to meet with you and seek God for the new thing that he's doing because he wants to bring rivers into your deserts and streams into your wilderness. Come on now. See, we've got to understand what God is saying. I don't think you heard the Lord. We've got to understand what God is saying. The Lord said, I'm doing a new thing. Let go of the old thing. The Lord says, behold, I'm making all things new. Don't think he's going to put it back together the way it was. He said, the latter glory is going to be greater than the former glory. Stop laying a hold of the former glory. It's not enough. It was the lower level of glory. He's doing a new thing and releasing a higher level of glory. Yeah. Over the church and over your life. Okay, let me go back to something real quick. Cornelius, the Holy Spirit said, go back to that place. The Holy Spirit said, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up. Right now, some people are going through some things. I had a dear brother and sister of mine walk in the room today, and I heard the Lord say, it's going through some things. But better days are coming. Fresh anointing is coming. Fresh oil is coming. Yeah. Breakthrough is coming. Yeah. Healing is coming. It's coming, the Lord is saying. Yeah. Come on. The yeah. enemy says that you're disqualified. Jesus said, I qualified you before you were ever born. Yeah. Chose you before you ever took a yeah. breath. Yeah. Ordained you yeah. to do good works before you were ever born. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I yeah. want you to become who I said you would be before I ever put you in your mother's womb. Yeah. yeah. Come on, and you're becoming in the name of Jesus. Yeah. What's two things the Lord says Cornelius was doing? He was a man of prayer, and he was a man who gave gifts to the poor. He was a prayer warrior, and he was a sower. Yeah. The Word says in Genesis chapter 8, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Now is the time for you to be sowing seed. And to be a person of prayer. Ooh, that's good. Ooh. Do not let your mind take this to a tithing message. Don't do it. Fight your mind on this one. We're about to see a shifting in the earth politically, socially, economically. We're about to see things happen that we never thought would happen in our generation. We're about to see unrest. We're about to see all kinds of things going on that are unsettling. Yeah. But yet our foundation is in the Lord. Yes. Yes. On the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. How many receive what the Lord is saying right now? So what's your tendency going to be as we see disaster in other nations, economic challenge, war breakout, bombs being dropped? What is our tendency going to be? Hold on to everything as tightly as you can. 
But what did the Lord say in Genesis chapter 8? As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Do not hold on to your seed. The tendency will be hold tight everything you can. The Lord said, no, I'll bring you a multiplication on your seed and you're going to get a bigger harvest than ever before as you sow. Come on. See, we've got to understand this. And what do you have to sow? Your time, your talents, and your resources. Remember the parable and the Gospels. You have three things to be sowing right now. The Lord says, even though the earth is going to go into a time like the earth has never seen before, there's going to be labor pains. The earth is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. Yeah. The Lord says, even though we're coming into perilous times, the Lord says, I'm going to put a multiplication on your seed like never before. Amen. So the Lord says, if you will sow in faith in times of peril, you will reap a harvest a hundredfold men of Yeah. 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 Sow your time, spending time with the Lord, praying, pressing in deep. Come on. Sow your talents. What's gifts and anointings have God given you? Is God given you to be used? Right? Yeah. Sow your resources. You've got finances to sow also. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you guys, if I, if I love you, I would preach this stuff. And I'm not going to shy away from this. God says there's such an anointing on seed, tithe, and harvest right now. Ooh. And those who step in faith in perilous times and sow, you said, God says, watch how I'm going to meet you there. Yeah. Anything you withhold from God, you withhold from his ability to work in that area. Yeah. So in this time, if you're withholding your seed, don't expect God to be pouring out your time, your talents, your resources. Right now, if you're going, God, I thought you were going to do this seasons ago. God, I'm waiting on you for this. God, did God this, God this, God that. I thought this was going to happen. What's going on? God says, do not withhold your seed because you think I'm slow in keeping my promises. Amen. Do not delay your harvest. How many are hearing what the Lord is saying? The Lord says, now is the time to sow generously because we're about to see a harvest like never before. There's an anointing. Mm, this is the Lord. There's an anointing on your seed right now like never before. Hallelujah. As long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. Yeah. The Lord didn't say, you know, as long as there's not war in Russia and Ukraine. The Lord said, come on now. How many are hearing what the Lord is saying? I'm telling you, this helped position him to have angelic visitation. He and his family loved the Lord and went after him desperately. They were prayer warriors and they sowed radically. And it came before the throne of God and the realms of heaven opened to them. It's positioning. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. And you are in control of what your position is right now. Oh, that's good. Get in position. You, so many of us right now are going, God win, God win, God win. God says submission will bring you into position. That's a word from the Lord. That's not in notes. God says you're waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. The Lord says, I don't submit to you. The Lord says, submit to me and trust me. So when there's famine. Come on, pour out when it's dry all around you. Because the principles of my kingdom are opposite, stark contrast to the kingdom of the earth. Stop sowing your seed based upon earthly principles. Get in alignment with the principles of the realms of the third heaven and watch what I will do. Yeah. Time, talents, and resources. That's not in the notes. How many are excited about the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. So the angel answered, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial before what? The throne of God. Now send men to Joppa and bring back a man named Simon who's called Peter. He's staying at the house of Simon the Tanner whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants and he told them everything that had happened and he sent them to, to Joppa. Hmm. Look at the heart of Cornelius. The moment the angel speaks and leaves, he acts in obedience. Instant. He doesn't sit around going, hmm, I wonder if that was from the Lord. 
An angel just came and spoke to you. It's from the Lord. And I'm going to tell some of you right now, you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is speaking to you. Do what he's telling you to do. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. How many are receiving what the Lord is saying right now? God wants to position you for the opening of the realms of heaven. How many receive this in the Lord? Yeah. Here's the thing. As God is positioning you, He's positioning others. As God is doing things in you, He's doing things in others. God is aligning people all over the earth right now. Did you hear that? Yeah. God is aligning people all over the earth right now. But why is God right now just telling me to forgive people and let go of things? And why is God dealing with this and talking to me about that? And why is God doing that? Well, number one, we're in the days of awe. And it's all about repentance and forgiveness and letting go. Yes. Number two, God is trying to get things out of your life that are in the way so you can be positioned for what is coming. Yes. I tell you, he's the great physician, and he's the one who's going to put you in position. That's who he is. We need to understand this in the Lord. But why do you say God's aligning other people? We'll look at verse 9 of Acts chapter 10. About noon the following day, as they are on their journey and approaching the city, Peter was up on the roof praying. Oh, look at that. See, a lot of things that are about to happen in your life will be birthed in prayer. We've got to be men and women of prayer. We've got to be men and women of prayer. Amen. God wants to teach us how to pray without ceasing. Prayer is not Thursday night at the refuge. That's part of our prayer walk. How many receive that? God wants to teach you how to pray throughout the day and night. To be a people of prayer. Always in communion, conversation, and prayer. Practicing the presence of God. How many receive that? Amen. So about noon the following day as they went on their journey approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray and he became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. That can be a scary word with everything going on in the world. <laughs> How many know it's in the Word? Amen. He got lost in the Lord. Does that make you feel more comfortable? <laughs> God came upon him. He didn't know if he was in the body or outside the body. How's that? Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <laughs> Glory in verse 4. All right. Oh, hallelujah. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet was let down by the earth's four corners. And it contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. And then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I'm a good Jewish boy. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. And the voice to him came to him a second time and said, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Amen. I was spending time with the Lord last night, kind of laying in bed after Miss Holly and I got done talking a little bit. I was in that half awake, half asleep point. Man, God speaks during that time. <laughs> you know what I heard the Lord say to me? Andrew, you're not the judge, I am. <laughs> I really wanted to go to sleep quickly. <laughs> you know, sometimes we damn things that God has not damned. We damn people that God has not damned. You just said that from the pulpit. It's Shakespearean. You know what I'm saying. It's a problem. The Lord is calling us to walk in love. These three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God's the judge and he'll deal with the judgment. How many receive that? Amen. Now, I'm not saying we're backing away from standards. I'm just saying we've got to understand. See, God was dealing with Peter's religiosity here in some ways. Come on. I mean, Jesus himself said things about food that Peter needed to listen to. See, does anybody hear this? And a voice came from Seth from heaven a second time that said, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. See, we've got to understand in the Joel chapter 2 outpouring, the Joel chapter 2 outpouring, the Lord says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. You know what amazes me in the New Testament church? Jews are getting saved. Miracles are happening. The Holy Spirit's falling. People are getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then the Lord starts doing it at Cornelius' house, and they get all upset. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's a Gentile. Yeah. Do not call anything impure that I have called clean. Yeah. We're about to see God pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Yeah. Can you believe it? God just poured out His Spirit on the LGBTQ community. What's He doing? <laughs> Not any different than the disciples from Jerusalem going, what are you doing ministering to the Gentiles, Peter? And then Peter shares what God is doing. See, positioning will bring persecution sometimes. See, as you get in the position with the Lord, God's going to begin doing things in your life that other people aren't going to understand. And positioning can bring persecution. Stay in love. Stay in love. What did Peter do to the disciples back in Jerusalem? He just explained what God did. The Holy Spirit fell and they couldn't say another word. Yeah. Oh, I guess the Holy Spirit is poured out on the Gentiles too. <laughs> See, we got to understand Joel chapter 2 at the end of the age. He's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. God's going to fall on communities in ways that's going to shock us. Right. Yes. Yes. We need to be there to go in for the harvest. Because as God falls on different communities, people are going to be saying, can you tell us what's happening? What is this? Amen, brother. And that's where we're going to walk in and go, um, let me tell you what this is. This is Jesus. And we're going to see revivals in communities where we never expected revival to come. Because he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Get your heart ready. God says, I'm the judge. Do not call him pure what I have made clean. <laughs> how, how many hear what the Lord's saying? Amen. Now, I'm not saying that as a body we're going to say when God falls on the LGBTQ community that it's okay to, to be saved and not change. Because we're going to see folks saved, free, healed, delivered, and walking in the truth. Yeah. We're not going to let our standards down. How many receive it in the Lord? Yeah. Amen? We're not going to do that. We're going to believe that if God touched me and saved me and delivered me and positioned me and got me into the right place with Him, He can do that with anybody. He can do that with anybody. How many receive that in the Lord? And I want to see this church be a church where God can bring people from the LGBTQ community to save, free, healed, delivered, to walk in the heterosexuality that God called them to walk in. Hallelujah. And walk in His glory. I want to see God be able to bring folks in that are addicted, addicted to alcohol and drugs. I want to see God bring atheists in here who come in and question there's God, but by the end of the service, know that there's a God. Come on. I want God to be able to bring anybody he wants to in this church. And we believe that the Lord desires that all men would be saved and come into a knowledge of truth. I'm telling you, positioning is going to bring persecution. There's some forerunners in this room right now. That's a whole other message. See, I want you to understand something. While Cornelius was being positioned, Peter was being positioned. While Cornelius was preparing, God was preparing. God was preparing Peter. How many received this? Amen. We've got to understand this. What am I saying? We're not the remnant church. We're part of the remnant church. And God is raising up the remnant throughout the earth right now. He's saying to many in the church right now, come out from among them and be separate. God is raising up his remnant. God is positioning his remnant. And we're going to be a people intimate with Jesus that surrender to the Holy Spirit, that yield to him, that walk in obedience and access the third heaven. And pull what's in the access, or what's in the third heaven into the earth. Yeah. And it's going to become a way of life for us. How many received that? Amen. And I'm telling you guys, whether you are in this room and you're in your teens, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s. Brother in this room in his 90s right now. Let me tell you this, the time is short and there's nothing more important that you can, that you can do right now than invest your life in living for Jesus. Because this is going to transform your life forever.
John came to me the other day or texted me the other day. He said, God said he's going to release the breaker anointing over me. You know what the Lord wants to do first for all of us? Release the breaker anointing so the Holy Spirit can break out of the box that we put him in. Yeah. And then the breaker anointing is going to come on you. Yeah. Once the box is broken, I'm telling you, Mary of Bethany comes in the house, throws the door open, comes to Jesus, yeah. and breaks the box over yeah. Yeah. And what comes out? The sweet smelling fragrance that fills the room. When the box is finally broken and the Holy Spirit is able to pour himself out over you the way that he desires, yeah. the whole room is going to be filled with the fragrance of your breakthrough. By the way, when the box broke, where did the perfume flow first? The head. The Holy Spirit says, I want to break the box and pour the perfume on your cranium. Yeah. Because that's where the biggest blockage is to the things that I want to do. It didn't hit the head for, for no reason whatsoever. It was prophetic. How many are getting this? And, and what does Judas and the religious people say? What a waste. She's just poured it on the head of Jesus, guys. What a waste. This it really the voice of religion speaks, right? That perfume could have been sold and fed poor all the poor folks all around here is worth a year's wages. And what did Jesus say? What she has done to me is beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. See, as the Lord begins to break you, so the fragrance can flow. The oil doesn't flow unless the olive is crushed. Mm -hmm. You're going to be ruined in the process. But your life is going to become a fragrance that fills every room that you enter. How many receive that? We might make it back to the notes here eventually. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many are excited about the Lord? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. A few more things that I just want to put out there this morning. How many of oh God is positioning you? Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. How many are excited about the Lord? Amen. If you're seeking God for a passage to memorize, I want to encourage you to seek God on this passage because this is crucial. Because this is an identity passage in the Lord that every single one of us need to understand. And the Word of God says this, As for you, Somebody say, as for me. The Lord says, as for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. That's a realm. We live in a realm. Paul just told us whose realm it is. What's part of our responsibility? To bring the atmosphere and activity of another realm into this one the realm of the third heaven into the earth because the earth and everything in it is the Lord's. And he's given dominion to mankind. How many are getting this? You're going to bring, you're going to be a shifter of atmospheres in the Lord. How many receive it? He says it's the spirit that's now at work in those that are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the sinful nature and following the desires and the thoughts of the flesh. Like the rest, we are by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ. Why were you saved? Well, I decided one day I needed a Savior. No, you didn't. You responded to his choosing. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go forth and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then he'll ask of the Father whatsoever you will in my name, and he'll give it to you. You aren't saved by happenstance. You are saved because you responded to the one who chose you before the foundations of the world were laid. <laughs> Come on. Verse 4, he said, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in, Christ, in transgressions, right? While we were yet God's enemies, Christ died for us. Never forget this, church. And it is by grace that you are saved. And God, oh, grab a hold of verse 6. And God will raise us up in Christ. Is that what your Bible says? No, somebody called me on it. Say, Pastor, you're not reading it right. 
And God raised us up. Raised means it's done. It's finished. It's completed. It's already happened. How many received this in the Lord? And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Pastor, why are you preaching on realms? Because the realms are ours. You are already seated in heavenly realms. Therefore, you have open access to the realms of the third heaven in which you are seated. The church has not understood Ephesians chapter 2, and that's why we've settled for lower realms of glory. Come on. So why are we seated in the heavenly realms with him? In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus, for it's by grace you've been saved. He said it twice. Come on now. In eight verses. Through faith, not of yourselves, but it's the gift of God, not by works, so that anyone can boast. For we are God's workmanship. That word workmanship in the Koine Greek is better interpreted work of art. So Aaron, the Lord is saying, for you are God's work of art. Created in Christ Jesus to, good, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you. When did he prepare them in advance? Well, you know about the time he thought, well, my mom and dad are going to have a candlelight dinner and a little bit of romance and I'm going to come along. I thought, well, I'm going to prepare something for Geo to do. <laughs> they were prepared before the foundations of the world were laid. Amen. Before he ever said, let there be light, he knew that Ed was going to be placed in his mother's womb for such a time as this and he prepared good works for him yes. to do. This is not half as random as the enemy wants you to think. You're not here because mom and dad had a candlelight dinner and a little bit of romance. You are here because God ordained you before the foundations of the world were laid, wrote a book about you, created a plan for your life, seated you with Christ Jesus, and is releasing you now to walk in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. we got to start understanding we are who God says we are. I'm sorry, but my Bible... No, I'm not. My Bible says... <laughs> you are seated with Him in heavenly realms. This is the way the enemy teaches it. You will be seated with Him in heavenly realms. Because the enemy doesn't want to deal with the church who knows who they are and that they are fighting Him, not from a position of being under Him, but in a position of being over Him. You're not fighting from the bottom of the mountain. You're fighting on the top from the top of the mountain. And the enemy's trying to convince you that you're in the cheap seats. <laughs> right now, one of the greatest wars in the church is not with the enemy. It's the battle for whether or not you're going to believe that you are who he says you are. And when that battle is settled right here, because too many of us are far too cerebral and it hinders the flow of the Holy Spirit. I catch myself sometimes doing that. Come on now. But the Lord says, when your mind comes into alignment with my word, watch what I'm going to do. How many receive this in the Lord? So I want you to understand something today. You function in two different realms. You have the earthly realm that you function in and you have the realm of the third heaven yeah. that you have access to function in. Many in the church are going to settle for the lower realms of glory and flowing in what they get here on the earth, believing when the roll is called up yonder, they'll be there. Yeah. What do I mean by there? Finally getting to the place where they flow in the power of the third heaven. Yeah. That's not the heart of God. The heart of God is that you get revelation here on earth. You're seated with him in heavenly realms. And that you bring his dominion, power, and authority into the earth to establish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Why would the enemy not want you to understand that? Because the sooner God's kingdom gets established here on earth, the sooner the king returns. And in the enemy's time, he's very, very short. That's why you're about to see him rage in the nations. How do you receive this? Yeah. Yeah. So what is God wanting you to do? Pursue intimacy with Jesus. 
What's God wanting you to do? Yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen. What's God wanting you to do? Walk in obedience. What, God, what is God wanting you to do? Walk in your identity. Yeah. Yeah. And start pressing in to the higher things that God has for you. Mm -hmm. It's going to help us with the flesh suit. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Anybody get that statement? Yeah. See, that's important. The enemy wants you to get focused on this battle with the flesh so much. You know what? Let's focus on falling in love with Jesus and the Holy Spirit's going to help us with this flesh battle. Because you can't win this battle on your own. You need the Holy Spirit. You need sanctification. We need God. You can't do this thing without Him. He made it that way. But somehow supernaturally, He also made it so He can't do it without us. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? And I tell you what, guys, God is bringing us into the truth of Matthew chapter 11. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus starts talking about John the Baptist. And he makes that famous statement where the Lord says, And since that time, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by violence, and violent saints take it. Now, the word violence is used, force is used. There's a lot of different words that are used there. <laughs> but I want you to notice Matthew chapter 11 and verse 7. The word says, And John's disciples were leaving, and Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go into the desert to see? A reed swayed in the wind. And what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes. No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom the word is written, and I will send my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare the way before you. It's Malachi 3.1. Man, the book of Malachi is unfolding before us right now. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there is not risen anyone greater. Not risen. Not ascended. Not gone higher. Anyone greater than John the baptizer, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. Verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. And forceful men lay hold of it. What is violence in the realm of the spirit? Pressing into intimacy with Jesus. What is violence in the realm of the spirit? Yielding to the Holy Spirit. What is violence in the realm of the Spirit? Fasting and prayer. What is violence in the realm of the Spirit? Obedience. Is anybody catching this? Yeah. Well, I'd rather pull out the sword. I get it. Now in the Darby translation of the Bible, I want to read verse 12 for you. The kingdom of heaven is taken by violence, and the violence sees it. The violence press into it. How do you receive that in the Lord? See, I want you to understand something in the Lord. God wants you to begin to become consciously aware of who you are and to start walking in that reality. We can call it the new birth reality. Are we going to believe who God says we are? Or are we going to believe who the enemy says we are? And the Lord says, one of the keys to victory is beginning to believe who God says we are. How do I begin to do that? Well, maybe we need to start reading scriptures on identity more. Every day. I'm going to read it till I believe it. Come on, speak it over yourself and read it out loud. Because psychologists will tell you the voice that you have the highest tendency of believing is your own. Yeah. Right? Read the word out loud. Hannah says to me every once in a while when I go down to the secret place because her room is downstairs, Dad, are you going to do that talking thing again? <laughs> I can hear you. And I think, good. Because <laughs> I'm reading the word out loud. Now, I'm going to begin to wrap up by reading a prophetic word to you that I think you're going to find interesting. This is not a word that God gave me, but it's a word that God spoke very recently, and it ties into this message today. Are you ready? The Lord says, now begins the merger of Christ's spiritual kingdom in the earth realm with the kingdom of heaven in the spirit realm 
in ways and in levels never seen before. This merger will accelerate a new era of Pentecost. Power and kingdom authority will be seen on the earth as never seen before. For I'm pouring out my spirit like never before. I'm giving you assistance that I've given no other generation. I've made you to work with my angels in levels that no other generation has done before. Wow. Anybody want me to read that again? Yeah. <laughs> John's in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> now begins the merger of Christ's spiritual kingdom in the earth realm with the kingdom of heaven in the spirit realm in ways and levels never seen before. The Lord said, now begins. We're in the now time of the Lord. We're no longer in the two years from now time, the 10 years from now time, the 20 years from now time. We're in the now time in the Lord. Is anyone hearing this? He said the merger will accelerate a new era of Pentecost. Azusa Street was the birthplace of the Pentecostal movement in America. Power and kingdom authority will be seen on the earth as never before. I'm pouring out my spirit like never before. I'm giving you assistance that I've given to no other generation. I've made you to walk with my angels in levels no other generation has. Pastor Cindy, will you give us 1 Corinthians 2.9? As Pastor Cindy is looking that up for us, let me ask you a question. How many are just breathing in that word right now? God says, I'm about to do things in this generation I've never done in any other generation before. What did the Lord say in Haggai? I'm about to do something in your generation that if I told you, you'd have a hard time believing it. Yeah. How many hear that in the Lord? Yeah. Amen? Notice what God says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived... The things God has prepared for those who love Him. So what is God saying I'm about to bring you into? What your eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor mind imagines. God wants us to begin to see ourselves as heirs of Christ. Not orphans. Yeah. Sons and daughters and not slaves. And you know, I'm going to make a statement here, and don't take this out of proportion, please. The Lord is beginning to bring two realms to work together in the earth. The heirs of righteousness and the angels of heaven. The Lord right now is releasing more angels on the earth to assist those who will inherit the kingdom than ever before. Amen. What's the purpose of the angels? The Lord said in Hebrews chapter 1, He said, Are not my angels ministers of fire? He said, And they come to serve, to help serve. Yes, to minister to the heirs of salvation. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting if we take a look at that. Let's look at it real quick. Hebrews chapter 1. I just don't want us to miss this truth by gliding over it quickly. Okay? So Hebrews chapter 1. And I also don't want us to get off track with this either. Okay? Hebrews chapter 1. How many are excited about God? Amen. Let me say it again. How many are excited about God? Yeah. Let me ask it again. How many are excited about God? Yeah. The word says, Hebrews 1, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in the last days, he has spoken by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he has made the universe. Remember, the father thinks it, the son speaks it, and the Holy Spirit manifests it. The son is the radiance of God's being, sustaining all things by his powerful Word. How does God sustain you? By His Word. After He provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven, 
So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, and today I've become your father? That's Psalm 2, 7. Again, I will be your father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes the... His, mm, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But this is what we need to understand. God created the angels to serve. He created us for intimacy. We will share things with Jesus the angels never will and the word says they long to look into. <laughs> So when God sends angels to the earth, what are they? The word says they're the diacono. They are the ones that are here to come help us and labor with us in the end times. So I'm going to tell you something, and don't get this comment off kilter, please. We're about to see angels show up in our services more than ever before. Yes. And they come carrying the atmosphere and activity of the throne room of God. They always come with a purpose. People have seen in services angels showing up with boxes in their hands. And they got something from the throne of God. Angels protect. Angels bring healing. Angels shift the atmosphere. Every single one of you, when you were born, were given a guardian angel. How many understand that in the Lord? Remember? Brother Ken comes in on a Sunday and he keeps looking at the fan. And I asked him afterwards, why are you looking at that fan? He said there was an angel on it swinging around the fan. And as he swung around the fan, there was a cup in his hand that had liquid in it and it was pouring out all over the room. Yeah. Last Tuesday night in guys' group, at the end of the night when the guys and the ladies are together, Ken keeps looking up front. And I said, why are you looking up front? He said, there's angels in the room. I said, oh, when did they come in? He said, when you started reading. Psalm 91. And he said, then they just stayed stayed there and stared at us, waiting for something else to happen before they left the room. I said, oh, I said, when did they leave the room? He said, when you read Malachi 3 and 4. I said, where did they go? He said, off on assignment. Hmm. Is that kind of Perking anybody's interest? Amen. Let's end with one more scripture. Matthew chapter 16. <laughs> See, I always want to be careful when, when I bring up angels in the message because people then start to focus on angels. Right. And, and I don't want us to focus on angels. They're messengers. They're servants. But how many know we're, we're thankful that they're here? Yeah. Okay? We are so thankful for every angel God's put in this building. So Matthew chapter 16, we're going to wrap up with verses 18 and 19. Hannah, that's my third wrap up. <laughs> so the word of God, the word of God says this. And I tell that you are, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it, the gates of hell. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What do keys do for you? They give you access. They open doors. They start engines. Okay? Notice what God is saying to Peter. I will give you the keys. Now, wait a minute. The Lord was just talking about the church. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against yes. it. And I will give you. He's not just speaking to Peter. He's speaking to the church. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Keys give you access to the third heaven. What's the number one key you gain access to the third heaven with? Intimacy with Jesus. Is anybody catching this at all? Amen. He said whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Yeah. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. And notice what he says in verse 20. Then, his, then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. 
See, when you get revelation of who the Christ is, you get revelation of Matthew 16, 18, and 19. Hmm. When you really get revelation of who Jesus is, it's parallel with Isaiah 22, 22. He's giving us keys. How many receive this in the Lord? Yeah. So what are the angels going to do? Decreeing and, decreeing and declaring are coming increasingly important at the end of the age. The word says, declare a thing and I will what? Establish it. I'll establish it for you. You know what that means? We better be very careful what we declare. Because God says, I'll establish it for you. That means if we can't say anything positive, healthy, godly, anointed, we better be quiet because it's going to be established. Jesus created the universe with a spoken word and we're made in his image. We have creatorial authority with our words. Come on. What's going to happen at the end of the age? We are going to speak it and the angels are going to carry it out and connect it with proper moments and time to bring it to pass. How many receive that in the Lord? Yeah. Let me ask you a question about the angels. What realm do they dwell in? Third heaven realm. God's also going to use them to teach us how to access the third heaven. How's he going to teach us? Look at all the people that angels showed up to in the word and spoke to and revealed things to. Okay. Now, Pastor, you've talked a lot about a lot of things. You've been talking about walking in the realms of heaven with Jesus, yielding to the Holy Spirit, walking in obedience. I believe we're going to start seeing angelic visitations more and more and more. Mm -hmm. You know, the word already says, be cautious when you entertain strangers because many have entertained angels mm -hmm. unaware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I believe we're going to see angels being sent to help us more and more because we're heirs. You don't worship an angel, you don't focus on an angel, you don't tattoo its picture on your shoulder. But God sends them to help us because they're ministers of fire sent to help those who inherit eternal life. How many receive that? <clears throat> Pastor, why are you saying all this? Because new realms in the spirit are opening up right now in this hour. Yeah, they're for the heirs. They're for us. So if you are pressing in and positioning and just desiring Jesus with all your heart, think it not strange what's about to happen in your life. And if angels show up, if the heavens open, if most importantly, Jesus just walks right in the room. Don't be surprised because this is our inheritance. This is our right as heirs. This is for us right now. And God says, Acts chapter 2, the entire book of Acts is just the former reign. He said the latter reign is going to be everything that the former reign was, but greater and more poured out now. And we're about to see two realms come together to accomplish the will of the Lord. How many are excited? Amen. Now, I want to say something to you as we wrap up. First comes the knowledge, then comes the test. Mm -hmm. This teaching was to open up your heart to the fact that there are new realms that God wants to bring you into. And there's so much more than three songs and offering, two songs, a quick word, and you're out in time to get a good seat at Chili's. Huh? <laughs> See, that's lower level Christianity. That's settling for a form of godliness and denying its power. <laughs> But the Lord is raising up a people who love the presence of God. The Lord is raising up a people who walk in the power of God. The Lord is raising up a people who are covered in the armor of God and wearing the cloak of humility. God is raising up a people that are going to do greater things than what Jesus did. And the time is now, the Lord is saying. I read Joel 2 and I read Amos 9. And the Lord says, and in that time, and every time I do, Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, and in this time, and in this time, Andrew, it's time. And I've got a word from you from the Lord today. It's time. 
It's your time to believe you are who he says you are, to press into intimacy with Jesus. Amen. Yield Amen. to the Holy Spirit, the alabaster box to be broken that you have contained the Holy Spirit in, and the fresh oil to, to cascade down over your head, and for you to become everything God created you to be. It's time. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that the times and the seasons are in the hands of the Father. Lord, the word says that you don't even know the time, the hour that you're going to return, but the Father knows. Father, you may not know, or Father, the Son may not know the hour or the moment, but he certainly knows the season. And so, the, so, so do the sons that are in this room right now. Lord, the seasons are telling us that the time is near for the return of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you will help us begin to live like we know the time is short. Lord, help us take the words that you released in this room today and walk them out, Lord. Lord, I decree and declare that you spoke them to me. I spoke them out and your angels are now establishing yeah. these words for us. Yeah. And that everyone in this room, everyone hearing this message is about to walk in the realm of the supernatural. Lord Jesus, we're excited to walk in the realm of the supernatural, but we're much more excited to walk more intimately with you. So Lord, as these things begin to happen, don't let us focus on angels, manifestations, encounters, or experiences. Lord Jesus, may we just stay in a place of consistent, desperate love. For behold, you love us with an everlasting love. Lord, I just say thank you for your love in this place right now. Lord, I thank you for this word. May it not return to you, boy. And Lord, I bless this people. Lord Jesus, I just decree and declare in your precious name and you're establishing it that every roadblock, every hindrance, every weight, everything that has so easily beset them in previous years, Lord God, you're stripping away. Lord, everything that's gotten in the way, held them back, whispered in their ear, held them down, you're pulling it away right now. And Lord Jesus, they're becoming everything that you created them to be. Lord, for those that are in you, they become a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And Lord, I decree and declare this people are about to walk as the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, uncompromising, walking in power and glory and anointing. Lord, I ask this day, may you release mantles in this room that your angels are holding on to right now. Mantles, Lord God, that you've desired to give this house and everyone that's in it. Lord, I ask that you would pour out mantles over those that are watching this broadcast, Lord, and listening to it. Lord, may you begin to release mantles over this house and this people. And Lord, I declare these people are going to begin walking differently than they've ever walked before. Lord, I thank you, God, that the words that you spoke over them before you ever put them in their, their mother's wombs, they're catching up with those words in the timeline, and they're beginning to walk them out. Lord, they're becoming everything you said that they would become. They're rising up as a mighty army. Lord, they're taking their place in the great end times battle. They're putting on the armor, Lord. And they're sharpening their swords. They're on their knees, Lord. Worshiping you. Lord, I thank you for this people. Lord, I ask in the remainder of the days of all that are left, God, and we just have a handful. Lord, I ask, God, that if there's anyone in this house, anyone listening that needs to forgive anybody, let anybody go, let go of things they're holding on to, secret grudges, offensive anger. Yeah. Lord, secret conversations, Lord, quiet things spoken. Lord, I ask, God, that we would just forgive and release and that eagle's wings would spread from our backs because of it so that we can soar above the things that once held us back. Lord, I thank you that even as you brought a grieving woman in the house last night and started mending relationships, Lord, you're healing relationships in the lives of the people in this house. 
Lord, we're about to bump into people that we haven't seen for years. Lord, we're about to get phone calls out of the blue. Lord, I thank you in the days of all where there's open heaven for forgiveness, reconciliation, and restoration. You are bringing about divine encounters. Yeah. And in them, healing waters are going to flow. Lord, there's a river that flows from the throne of God through the heavenly city and it waters the tree of life on either side. Lord, may that river flow over us in the days to come. And Lord, take us victoriously surrendered and in a manner that has pleased you completely through the days of awe and in the Yom Kippur. Yes. Ah, ah! Lord, I thank you that we're going to see revival in Yom Kippur in the trumpets this year, God. The trump is going to blow and revival is going to be poured out on the earth. For I will pour, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And I will pour out my spirit even on my maidservants in those days, declares the Lord. For I will rebuild the fallen tabernacle, tent, booth of David. I will repair its walls and I will restore it as it used to be. For I will send you Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers so that I don't have to strike the land with a curse. Lord, I thank you that you're preparing us for the end of the age. Lord, I bless your people today. And I thank you for the privilege, Lord God, that you've given me of being a servant in this house. Lord, we thank you for your presence that fell upon us today. Lord, for the realms of heaven that opened up to us. And Lord, may you not only open up the realms of the third heaven over this house, may you open up the realms of the third heaven over this entire region through this house, Lord. All over the apostolic state of Illinois, Amen. all over the United States of America, Israel, and the earth. For you desire that all men would be saved and come into a knowledge of the truth. Lord, push the second heaven out of, out of the way, God, we pray, and open up the third heaven for two realms to come together. Yeah. Lord, I decree and declare that shift right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare we're coming into agreement with your word today, and it's done. And Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray now, may you pour out over this group the seven lamps of God. May you pour out over them the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And may we delight in the fear of the Lord. Lord, may you pour out the oil of Isaiah 61 anointing over this people. And Lord, may you fill them with your glory as we walk in the glory realms. This is for all of us, Lord. And Lord, I just pray this in your precious name. And Lord, I pray over this people. Lord, may you bless them and keep them. Lord, may you make your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. Lord, may you turn your countenance towards them and fill them with shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, Lord. Lord, may you shalom them and may you shalom them. Lord, may you anoint them with the oil of intimacy. May they be wise virgins filling their lamps with oil with extra jars to spare. Wicks trimmed and lamps burning waiting for the bridegroom to come. Lord, I speak the wise virgin anointing over this group right now. Lord, I speak the wise virgin anointing over them right now. Right now, Lord. Lord, help us be a people ready for you when you return. Lord, release that wise virgin anointing <clears throat> over your people. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Rosh Hashanah, for the days of awe, 
and you have to go right in the middle of it, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, now may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you, O oh God. Lord, anoint this week to be filled with victory and divine appointments in you. Lord, anoint prayer on Thursday night. May the realms of the third heaven open to us. And Lord, I ask that you will keep this group safe. Lord, I speak Psalm 91 blessing over this group. Lord, you sit in Psalm 91. Lord God Almighty, Lord, that you will give your angels charge over us. They will lift us up in their hands so that we won't even strike our foot against the stone. Lord, you said, whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of El Shaddai. They will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress, our God, Elion, in whom we trust. For he delivers us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He covers us with his pinions and under his wings we take refuge. His truth is our shield and buckler. Therefore, we will not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth, wasteth away at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come near us. We will only observe with our eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are our refuge. You are our habitation. Therefore, no evil will befall us, neither will any plague come near our dwelling. For you give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. They bear us up in their hands so that we don't strike our foot against a stone. We'll tread upon the lion and the serpent, the young lion and the adder we will trample underfoot. Therefore, the Lord says, because we've set our love upon him, he will deliver us. Anyone need deliverance? He will set us on high. He will take us higher because we've known his name. We'll call upon him and he'll answer us. He'll be with us in trouble. He'll deliver us and honor us. And with long life will he satisfy us and continually show us his sozo. Lord, pour out your sozo and your zoe over this people. And Lord, we ask this in your precious name. For Lord Jesus, Adonai, you're the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let me ask you a question. Have we been blessed today? Amen. Have we been blessed today? Has this been a manifest in this place today? Hallelujah. I want to thank you today, not only for coming, but thank you for staying extra innings today. There is a blessing, a special blessing for those who linger. Amen. So let's wrap up singing a quick song before the Lord that we've been singing all day long. Remember, we're in the days of awe. We started out praying and praising. Let's end praying and praising. We stand, we stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, we stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe.